Self-declared gun enthusiasts in Texas have signed an open letter calling for congressional action on gun control. That's right. It comes as lawmakers, including Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn, are working to find middle ground on gun legislation. Major Republican donors to Texas Governor Greg Abbott's campaign have even signed the letter. It endorses creating red flag laws, expanding background checks, and raising the legal age to buy a gun to 21. CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns joins us now for more. Uh, Caitlin, at least two of those Texans who signed that open letter calling for more or stricter gun laws are billionaires. That helps with political power in this country. Uh, and the letter also voiced support for uh, the Texas senior Senator John Cornyn, who is leading, mm -hmm. co-leading this bipartisan effort to get something done. Uh, so with those two facts in mind, could something get done? Could it have an impact on Republican lawmakers in Texas? Well, they're certainly hoping so. The, those who authored this uh, op-ed or this advertisement are trying to put pressure on Cornyn and also offer him some political cover, saying, look, we're Republicans, we're gun owners, we support you in getting to some kind of conclusion uh, to respond to this shooting. But remember, Texas has passed looser restrictions on guns. They've actually loosened restrictions on guns in the wake of shootings. Uh, you had Greg Abbott supporting red flag laws last year, only to back away from them. Uh, what's being debated on the Senate side is a very narrow look at ways to respond to gun violence. Uh, looking at red flag laws, looking at background checks, although uh, not as expansive as previous bills. What's interesting here is to see whether these kinds of big donors can outweigh the Republican Party base, because it used to be that donors to the Republican Party were, uh, you know, pretty much had their finger on the pulse, were able to really influence outcomes. But we've seen kind of in the era of Trump, uh, of former President Trump, that the base of the party isn't necessarily the, the, the donor base, or they're not necessarily driven by that. So. We'll see if there is a uh, support for this. But um, this is interesting to kind of give some political cover and to kind of be out there saying, look, this is what we want you to do. There is no appetite, I can say, from talking to lawmakers on Capitol Hill on the Republican side. There's no uh, appetite for raising the limit to purchase a firearm, even though that that's been done at the state level. In Florida, for example, they raised, yeah. the, raised the age limit. Lawmakers have been saying that they don't want to do that at a federal level. So that's an uphill climb, but red flag laws are seem to be where the consensus is at this point. And so how would you say, Caitlin, those talks on Capitol Hill are going overall? I mean, we do sort of hear some promising news, but then it doesn't ever seem to crystallize into anything. So when might we hear yeah. news on an actual gun legislation proposal? And that's a good point, Tanya, that there is actually no legislation yet. They haven't even come up with a, a framework that they've been able to pass around. What they do say, however, those on both sides say that these talks are productive. Chris Murphy, who has been leading these discussions, has been at the forefront of this issue, has said, essentially, that he's more hopeful than ever uh, uh, that something will be able to get done. But he's also very realistic, saying, look, there's no way that an assault weapons ban is going to get through. Uh, there's no way that some of these other things that President Biden has asked for are going to get through, like expanding uh, background checks. But there could be consensus on red flag laws, and in, that would take the form of providing incentives to the states to implement their own red flag laws. We've mm -hmm. seen states pass that, like in Florida and Indiana. Um, also, something on background checks. Interestingly, Pat Toomey, remember, he was the uh, co-author of a background check bill after Sandy Hook with Senator Joe Manchin. He was on Face the Nation over the weekend, and he said it will likely be a more watered down version of that if they are able to get it through. But he's hopeful that they can get, you know, half of Republicans on board with this and was trying to argue that it's consistent with Second Amendment rights. And that's really uh, the key here, is getting Republican buy-in. It was interesting to hear Mitch McConnell, when he was at home over the recess, saying that he wants uh, school safety and mental health to be factors. So, again, both sides being realistic about what they can achieve, but these pressure points, like an op-ed or families of victims testifying on Capitol Hill this week, could provide uh, additional pressure points. And these things are widely supported, as we've seen in the polls, in our polling, uh, by a majority of Americans. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes I feel like these issues should just go up to national referendum. You know, let's yeah. leave, leave the lawmakers out altogether. The, the fine people of the small <laughs> you know? states in the Mountain West would decline uh, that I know, also. I know. Yeah. All right. Well, Caitlin Huey-Burns, thank you so much for that. We appreciate it.